we're in this weird time of year, this transitional time of year, where it's starting to warm up and get a lot nicer out, but the trees still don't have their leaves. So in the meantime, while we're waiting for things to fully green up, I thought that it'd be great to scout five edible trees that you can identify from their bark alone. Because for one, it's great to practice our ID skills, but also scouting and locating those trees now means that you'll be prepared, and you'll know exactly where to go when harvest time comes around. First up, we have black cherry. Now you can tell black cherry by its burnt potato chip bark. That's how I learned it. So its bark is a lot darker than other trees and it's kind of separated into chips or flakes. Younger trees though, they'll, they'll have smoother bark, but they'll have these lenticels, which are tree pores pretty much. It's a site of exchange for oxygen and moisture maybe and then they, they're quite light. So here I see some lenticels, but they're, they're not that distinct. I'm mostly seeing their, their really chip-like burnt potato chip bark there. Black cherries have edible fruit. They're cherries, they're black cherries, and you wanna harvest them when they are black, when they're a very deep purple and when they're soft, not when they're red or hard. But even if you harvest what you think is a very ripe cherry, uh, trees have a very variable taste, so you might have some black cherries from one tree that taste pretty good, other ones that are not so good. So don't give up if your, your first black cherry isn't very tasty. But in general, trees that get more sunshine will have higher yields and also have tastier cherries, so look for those trees. Also another challenge with black cherry is that they are tall trees. Most of the black cherries that I'm seeing just around me there isn't really low branches so it's it's hard to harvest the cherries so you're going to want to scout maybe younger trees shorter trees trees that have low branches you could reach and maybe get yourself a berry hook to pull down those branches what you do with the cherries is only really limited by your creativity because you can eat them fresh you can make jams you can make jellies bake with them incorporate them into dishes that are both savory and sweet, there are a lot of options with black cherry. For me, black cherries ripen at the end of summer. Uh, for me, that's late August. Here we have hackberry. So hackberry has lighter bark with these very pronounced high ridges. Taking a closer look at the ridges, you'll see that the, it's actually like many layers of thin bark stacked on top of each other, which is interesting. Once you know hackberry, you won't forget it. It doesn't look like any other tree because of their very high ridges. Hackberries have edible berries. They're like pea-sized fruits. And what's cool about hackberries is, well, they ripen at the end of summer, but they stay on the tree for a long time. With so many wild foods that you forage, they have such a narrow window of when you can harvest them. Hackberries, you have a longer window. They actually will stay on the tree after the leaves have fallen. And so this is when most people harvest them because it's a lot easier to see these tiny little fruits because harvesting takes long enough since they're so small. So it can make your harvest more efficient when the leaves aren't there. It's better to think of hackberries more of as a nut than a fruit because it has such a big seed in the center with very little flesh to the fruit. And you can either just pop them in your mouth or you can grind them up into a meal and do something with it. But it will have a crunchy texture, which is off-putting to some people. Now, I wanna take a second. So wild food, it has strong opinions, let's say. It has strong flavors. It, has, it can have strong textures, like hackberries. It's just very different from what you're going to find in the grocery store. But at the same time, wild food is so unique and it's so much more nutritious. So give hackberries a shot, okay? But if you absolutely hate the crunch of hackberries, you could make a hackberry milk, which is another common thing to do with them. So you can grind them up and then boil them and it kind of becomes this creamy kind of milk thing. And then you strain it to get all the crunchy parts separated from the milk. You can sweeten the milk, you can bake with it, so you have options there. Mm -hmm. 
Next up, we have river birch. So you can identify river birch by its very peely bark, thin bark peeling off in big strips. And in some cases, you can look at the branches and they're actually quite bare. It also is a brownish kind of red color. And you can find river birch, like their name suggests, by water. So along waterways or in low areas where water will collect, or like this one, it's planted by a man-made pond. The edible part of river birch is its sap. So just like you can tap maple trees, get the sap and make syrup, you can tap birch trees and get birch sap to make birch syrup. So you can tap most birch trees, not just the river birch, but also like the white paper birch. But the thing is birch sap is a lot less sweet than maple sap. It has a lot less sugar. So that means you have to collect a lot more birch sap and boil it down to get a significant amount of syrup. But you can also drink the sap straight up, which is a practice that Nordic people have been doing for hundreds of years. And I also thought that in a survival situation, and it happens to be birch season, why not tap a birch for some clean water that's also mineral rich? Birch season is falls just after maple tapping season. When, so this is when the temperatures are above freezing at both day and night. Here we have shagbark hickory. Shagbark hickory, like its name, has shaggy looking bark. So what we're seeing is that its bark is peeling off in kind of narrow vertical strips and it kind of gives it an appearance like it has hair. Especially the older trees, those are the most shaggy. Younger trees don't have as much peely bark. Shagbark hickories have edible nuts. So they ripen in the fall, then the nuts will then fall off the tree and you can harvest them from the forest floor. Now, not all of these nuts will be good they can have issues. So for example, if the husks, which are outside the shell, don't easily separate from the shell, they likely have an issue. If you see a little hole in the shell, there's likely a little grub in there eating the nut meat. You don't want those. You can eat the nuts whole, or you can use them in recipes just like you would pecans because hickory is in the same family as pecan trees. Now that means you have to shell the nuts, which is quite difficult. That really takes practice, especially if you want basically whole hickory nuts. Or if you're really frustrated, you can just mash them all up and make hickory milk, similar to hackberry milk, where you, you mash it up, shell and nut, and then you boil it, and then the shells will sink, and then you can strain out or ladle off the hickory nut milk. And last, we have persimmon. Persimmon trees are pretty common in the southeastern United States, and they have blocky bark. It's almost like there's little cubes stacked on top of each other to make their bark. Now, persimmons have edible fruit and that are quite large for a wild fruit. And they have variable ripening time, starting in late August, but then they can ripen even into January. Persimmon trees are very tall. And they don't tend to have lower branches, unfortunately, again. So you might be able to harvest persimmons when they fall to the ground, but know that very ripe persimmons might burst upon impact. And you really do want those very ripe persimmons because even slightly underripe persimmons won't taste very good. So look for very ripe, very soft, they might even be wrinkly fruit. Also know that persimmon trees are dioecious, which means that there are separate male and female trees with only the female trees producing fruit. Now you can eat persimmons just on their own or you can make them into a pulp and then bake with that. I hope you learned at least one new tree today. All these trees have such unique, distinct bark that once you learn them, you'll never forget them. And if any of these trees grow where you live, you should go out now to scout them so you'll know exactly where to go when it's time to harvest the fruit, the nuts, or the sap. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll see you soon.